President, this check that I have in my hand represents the receipts from three record sales in your pilot program of loan asset sales. The loans that were sold are part of the Department of Education's program of college, housing, and academic facilities, the loan programs there, and the, uh, the proceeds of the sale of assets uh, loan of the Department of Agriculture's Farmers Home Administration. It is a, with a great deal of pleasure that on behalf of the Department of Education and the Department of Agriculture, I present to you this, this check for $3,410,000,000. Mr. And now, you having made my day, why don't I make Jim Miller's day? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> well, thank you, Secretary Lingen. Jim, you have it now, so that ought to reduce this fiscal year's deficit by over $3 billion. And uh, I welcome Professor Linos and the members of the Privatization Commission. These loan asset sales were very successful, as you can see, and they sold easily and on very favorable terms because of a great deal of hard work on the part of officials at the Departments of Education and Agriculture and by people like Joe Wright at OMB. He, the loan sales proceeds of approximately $3.41 billion constitute a significant step toward reducing the federal government's deficit, as I've said. And even more can be done to privatize federal loans. Presently, the federal government is the nation's largest lender, with $252 billion in direct loans, $450 billion in loan guarantees, and $453 billion in government-sponsored loans. We'll be taking a close look at these assets to determine which loans can be better handled by the private sector. But while all agree that the deficit must be cut, there's a new roadblock to the promising approach of asset sales. As part of the Graham-Rudman-Hollings fix in the debt ceiling extension, Congress prohibited counting the proceeds of asset sales toward reducing the deficit. This reflects the choice of some in Congress to achieve deficit reductions through higher taxes or lower national defense. Others agree with our position to reduce the deficits through cuts in wasteful domestic spending and through privatization measures such as the one that we announce here today. Any congressional restriction on deficit reduction, which would increase the tax burden on every taxpayer, is wrong. The difference in perspective here is useful. There are those who believe in less government and low taxation, and there are those who believe in big government and high taxation, and that's a choice I've always felt we could confidently leave to the American people. They've made their feelings known in the past, and I think they will do so again. So we're going to carry on, and you, I think, are contributing nobly to this task that we have of getting the government back into the business of government and getting it out of the hair of private business in this country. So God bless you all. And Thank you for what you did. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll let you all get back to work. It's more important than what I'm doing. Mr. President, it sounds like your uh, Judge Bork nomination is in trouble. Well, I'm very optimistic. I think that common sense will prevail and they will realize he's the best choice in the market today for that post. Senator Cranston says that he's elect already. He's counted the votes. Well, Senator Cranston's been wrong before. Well, speaker, because he's off the books uh, operations which have stunned this town and the country. But what? Off the books, Casey's operations. I think that there's an awful lot of fiction about a man who was unable to communicate at all and is now being quoted as if he was doing nothing but talk his head off. Well, did you sign the directive that led to a massacre in Beirut? No, and I have a copy 
of the measure that I signed. Can we see it? It was due. It was nothing but that we were all approving a plan requested of us by the government of Beirut, of Lebanon, I should say, to help them in counterterrorism. Never would I sign anything that would authorize an assassination. I never have and I never will, and I didn't. Did he carry out any uh, actions without your knowledge, Mr. President? I keep all these people get back. <laughs> Did he carry out any covert actions without your knowledge, Mr. Casey? Uh, not that I know of. And uh, don't you think you should have known? It seems to me that he did a lot of things you didn't know about. No, I think I did know. And, uh, and uh, there are a lot of things he's being charged with right now. I was going to say credited with, but you couldn't describe him as charged with. And I don't think any of them have a basis in fact. Do you support the Iran oil embargo? Thank you.